Hi guys, Corbis Keen here. I'm a certified financial planner and today we're going to look at the main differences between investing directly offshore and indirectly offshore. What's the pros and cons and which one is better? Without any further ado, let's get right into it. Let's look at both sides in more detail. There's basically seven major differences between both of them. So what's the main difference? With a direct investment, your money physically leaves South Africa and is paid into an offshore bank account. It's invested by making use of what is called a custodian facility or stockbroker. Basically just a fancy word for offshore investment firm. The benefit here is that your money never has to return back to South Africa and it can be paid out to an offshore bank account if you wanted to access your investment. With an indirect investment, on the other hand, your money is invested in a local investment vehicle such as a unit trust, an endowment policy, um, retirement annuities, etc. This basically allows you to invest offshore by making use of offshore funds within your investment. Unfortunately, your investment has to return back to South Africa. So in part one, we discussed that there's limits when investing directly offshore. If you want to take money offshore, you can't just do so without permission in the form of a tax clearance. And there's basically two ways you can do that. And that's by making use of your foreign allowances. Number one is your discretionary travel allowance of 1 million. The year you don't require any permission from SARS. But with your foreign investment allowance, you unfortunately require permission from SARS. With an indirect investment, on the other hand, there's no limit to the amount you can invest offshore. Therefore, you also don't require any tax clearance from SARS. But the main difference here is that your money has to return back to South Africa when you want to access it. Number three, protect yourself against currency devaluation. Keep in mind that the rand can become stronger, which will have an opposite effect on your investment. If your investment is made in a stable political environment, you can protect yourself against currency devaluation. The benefit here is that if the rand devaluates, it actually has a positive effect on your investment. Basically means that your investment will increase in value substantially. So the biggest benefit here is that your money doesn't have to return back to South Africa. With the indirect investment, although you will enjoy the benefit if the RAND devaluates, your money still has returned back to South Africa. So the benefit here is very limited. With the direct investment, you can choose in what currency your investment is made. In actual fact, you can choose in what country your investment is kept. With the indirect investment, on the other hand, you don't have the option of choosing the currency. Number five is tax. On a direct investment, all South Africans pay tax on their worldwide income. Fortunately for you, there are agreements in place with many countries, so you won't pay tax twice. With the indirect investment, you still use a local investment vehicle. This means that the tax that you will pay will depend on the investment vehicle used. Number six is the entry levels for the investment. Naturally, with a direct investment, you're investing directly offshore. Because you're investing in a strong currency offshore, the entry levels for a direct investment are normally high. With the indirect investment, you still use a local investment vehicle. Investment vehicles such as endowment policies, unit trust, retirement annuities are available with much lower entry levels. You'll also have the option of making monthly contributions, starting with as little as a few hundred rand a month. Number seven is the last one. It's capital gains tax. So what is capital gains tax? Well, basically, you'll be taxed again on the difference between the amount that your investment started with and the end value. So with a direct investment, there's a massive benefit. Your profits and losses will be calculated in the base currency. This means that you won't pay tax if your investment grew because the RAND devaluated. You will only pay tax on the portion that your investment grew in dollar terms. With an indirect investment, any profits or losses are calculated in RAND. So this can be problematic. It basically means that if the RAND loses value, your investment will grow additionally because of that and you will be taxed extra for that. To illustrate this, I think it's best if I use an example. You invest 1 million Rand directly offshore at 10 Rand to the dollar. This makes your investment worth $100,000. A few years later, your investment doubled. Now you have $200,000. So if the exchange rate never changed and it was still 10 Rand for $1, you would have had 2 million Rand. But now the exchange rate is no longer 10 Rand, but 15 Rand for $1. This means your investment is now worth 3 million Rand. Say you wanted to withdraw your entire investment. 
you will only pay capital gains tax on the difference in dollar terms. So to determine the capital gains tax, we'll have to determine what was your gain on your investment. So we'll take the end value minus the starting value. This will give us your taxable gain. So it's $200,000 minus $100,000. This means you had a $100,000 gain. You will only be taxed on the $100,000. Or to put it in perspective, times 15 Rand for $1, you will only be taxed on 1.5 million Rand. With a maximum effective rate of 18%, brings your total tax to 270,000 Rand. Or if you use Old Mutual's wrap structure, for example, it will only be taxed at 12% versus 18%. This bringing the total tax to 180,000 Rand. More on that in part three. So let's take the same example, but with an indirect investment. You invest 1 million Rand in an offshore fund, and the investment did exactly the same as our previous example. For us to determine what the capital gains tax will be on an indirect investment, we'll have to look at what was the gain between the starting value of your investment and the end value. So your initial investment was 1 million Rand and the end value of your investment is 3 million. This means you had a 2 million Rand gain and you'll be taxed on the whole 2 million Rand gain. With a maximum effective rate of 18%, this brings your total tax to 360,000 Rand. This means that the tax is significantly higher when doing an indirect investment. In fact, double compared to Old Mutual's wrap structure. Your end goal will ultimately decide on what investment you should choose. If you want to invest directly offshore, it can hold some amazing benefits, but it comes with some red tape. Old Mutual has figured out a way to work around the red tape with some amazing asset protection and tax benefits. In part three, we'll look at how Old Mutual has figured out a way to outsmart the system by still doing a direct investment and avoid paying certain offshore taxes. Well guys, I hope that you found this video in some way interesting or valuable. And if so, smash that like button and subscribe. The idea of this channel is to take what can sometimes be a complex financial topic and explain it in a very easy to understand manner. I'll do a part three where I dig into a bit more technical detail, where we'll look at the differences such as tax, limits, etc. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Or if you needed more info, my contact details are linked in the description below. So pop me a mail, give me a call, um, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you!